Welcome, bonjour, and bienvenidos at the First Half Podcast. This weekly show is about all things footy and the way we see it on this side of the pond. In our episode, we will try and cover as many topics as we can that fall into the categories of art, culture, music, fashion, food, drink, and the game itself, and anything in its sports ecosystem. Amy, do you like the way we Hi. do that intro? I do. Pretty cool, it's right? great, yeah. Thank you for being here. We're Pleasure. very happy, uh, excited, and uh, honored that you could take the time tonight to come speak with us and, and give us some insight. Obviously, you have a lot of it, and we really want to pick your brain on some subjects. Also, we want everybody that's listening to learn about you. And I hope you're in the mood for a little bit of conversation. <laughs> it's not too long, which is great. You have a little coffee. Everything's yeah, ready I'm to roll. Set. You've met the crew. We're very relaxed here. And at some point, we're going to have to talk about Muppets. But we'll get to <laughs> that. We'll get to that after. So if you could start off with your name and a little bit of background about who you are, what you're doing now, what you did, and obviously why we're excited to have you here. Okay. Well, my name is Amy Walsh. I'm happy to be here. Honored to be here. Um, I'm a now retired, but former women's national team player. I played from about 1998 to 2009, played in a couple of world cups and the Olympics in 2008. I got to interrupt. That's amazing. The way you just said that mm -hmm. playing a couple of world cups. You know, <laughs> well, just, well, it's, it's a multifaceted it's answer. Huge. You asked me a lot of things. That's huge. Yeah. Really proud of my career. Yeah. yeah. I've got some perspective now. I'm 10 years removed from it. And I uh, got voted into the, or inducted, I should say, into the Hall of Fame in 2017. Uh, played 102 times for my country. And yeah, really lucky to have, to have done it and then gotten to travel the world as a result and played with some pretty unbelievable people and, and players. Amazing. You have a relationship still with all those players? Well, not all. Because as I well, said, obviously I, not all like of them. Yeah, no, but I like, you know, the core group, yeah. the, the ones that you were always practicing with, maybe bunking with the ones that you got, you had a chemistry created for sure that obviously translated on the pitch. I mean, bonds are formed right on teams. So yeah, absolutely. So when Christine Sinclair came into her first camp, we were at the Algarve Cup in Portugal in 2000. So she was 15 years old. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. We were still looking for nicknames for her. like Sinky. Is that I mean, an automatic easy, is right? nickname? Is, is a nickname thing like immediately when a youth player hits the team mm -hmm. is it like does it, you guys go around the room and like okay we got to come up with something that's going to no. stick or is it just it really does like nicknames are supposed to just naturally progress yeah they, they sort of come about up. naturally come about and and but she was really quiet and reserved and so it was something that we knew was going to maybe take a little bit of time but you knew immediately that she was a generational talent like that you, you could feel it oh yeah is that something again this is these aren't the normal round of questions but the point being is you're here and we're going to start asking these <laughs> kind of things but uh do other athletes know that pretty much right away when they meet another athlete you know coming onto the team that it's like you're going to be around for a long time we already it, it, age doesn't have anything to do with it obviously at that point you're just like you know that there's there's just something about that that player that is going to transcend, you know, that particular tournament or that season, you know? Yeah, I think you do. Um, you know, growing up and you go through a bunch of different programs, whether it's youth or club, uh, university, and uh, you get used to, you know, there's, there's typical players and there's role players and there's character players. Um, but then she came in at such a young age and just, um, just so kind of like i said quiet subdued wanted to fly under the radar but she, the way that she played on the field it was impossible not to notice her yeah and charmaine hooper was there another sort of generational talent um but charmaine was everything that sinky was not not in terms of talent but in terms of personality so charmaine without asking for the attention drew it in the way that she carried herself on the field and off the field and Fantastic. with with Sinky, it was it was different, but you you knew immediately the impact she was going to have. You couldn't say at that point that she was going to play in score at play and score in five different World Cups and and be you know like who she is today. sports woman yeah. of the year and you know just in the Canadian Hall of Fame. Were or, you were you born to play football? Like was this? Did you from the get go play sport? Like did you grow up in a in a sports household? Did you know you were going to play? You know like. Some some athletes just know like that's the sport they're going to do, or is it just you know I was talented at this, I was talented at that, and 
you know, this rose to the top and I, w- I was going to follow that as a career path? Like, I mean. Yeah. Well, no, because women's sports, it didn't, it didn't exist at that time. True. Right. So, Correct. but I have an older brother. I have three younger sisters. We grew up in St. Bruno and my mom and dad, um, without being, you know, sort of rah, rah, sporty parents, they were, they were athletic people. And we also grew up in an era that wasn't sports specific, like now with all the kids going to Sud and academies and all this stuff. It's it was, a big deal now, right? It is a big deal. And I think they need to come back to the middle, but we can talk about that later. But it was a, an era where you could play a multitude of things and you could play them and you had the opportunity and your parents could afford to it, uh, afford to do it because by no means were we poor, but we weren't super well off and there were five kids. So, you know, that. That's a lot to deal with. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we were afforded the opportunity to, to, to be involved in, in tons of different sports and we were in a community where it was offered to us and, uh, my parents were at every single thing. And they drove us all around and then For my all dad the coached. Yep. Yeah. My dad coached. My mom was a manager and, but growing up, I wanted to be like my brother. Like I was a, I was a tomboy. Huh. So I was, I was multiple occasions mistaken for a boy and indignant and pissed off about it. But that you were mistaken for a boy. Yeah. But I, it didn't, it, but it didn't, I didn't care, you know, whether it was the eight year old with the short hair oh, and I was playing okay. on the boys team and I blended in. So huh. I liked that. Sure. Because it didn't draw attention. It didn't draw attention. But exactly. after the fact, if we all went to the pool and they told me, Vessiali. Yeah, they found they, this. They yeah. found an, an or the, they go say Lord Bob. And I was like, no, no. And I lifted up to show my one piece. I'm a girl. My gosh, that's amazing. But I just wanted to be like my brother. Yeah, yeah. And like Wing Rescue, because those that are the was posters that were up, on yeah, the wall. On the wall. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder, um, yeah, those posters, have they changed? Have they changed for 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 young girls and, and yeah. yeah I think so because of opportunities and because of players like Christine Sinclair and because of Yourself? the NWSL yeah. well, well maybe on. paving the way for yeah. somebody well, like some her of the people got to pave the way right yeah but that yeah, I think it was sort of a transitional phase and they have to keep putting the money in putting the sponsorship in the associations have to put in the support so that little girls can put posters on their walls of female idols right. female professional idols and current as well. Yeah, right? That's exactly. going to be something I think that's very important with the the words that you brought up already about generational and, and specific talent that sort of go through, you know, year after year after year. But there's n- not all athletes are, are, are that or like that. Mm-hmm. And associations or, or organizations tend to choose, you know, the one or two athletes and that's who they market and that's mm-hmm. who they push through. But there needs to be... And this is, this is the question, you know, like, what is it that needs to be done to keep that going, to keep those posters flowing when it's not just about one particular athlete and about the bigger picture, right? Um, and that's something I'd like you to, you know, sort of get into is like what you were talking about, getting back to the middle, you know, bringing, bringing the sport, you know, how does it keep rolling? How does it keep, you know, being ingested by the community and, and talked about? Well, I think it has to, from a grassroot, grassroots point of view, I think that we need to move away from the sports specificity at such an early age. Kids need to have fun again. And do and, more things, right? More sports. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and be allowed to do that because it's one thing, like I think there's a campaign last year where baseball, basketball, soccer Canada all joined together and they had like their um, marquee athletes promoting a multi-sport approach. And that's fine to do it from the top down is the right message, but is the same message being told to parents and athletes from the bottom up? No. And that's not right. because, um, you know, a kid's going to be benched if they play football because they were at a hockey practice or a hockey game and they, they missed the football practice or basketball or whatever it is that they're playing. Correct. So from an association standpoint, even when we're talking about minor sports, it's not, trick- it's sports, not trickling down. No, it's not trickling down. It's too, it's too slow. So that needs to change. And then from, as, as a gender issue, if you look at the women's uh, national team from the US and Megan, uh, Megan Rapinoe and all the good things that they're doing there, they, we always rode their coattails, the US. And Canada is still like Because behind. that's just sort of how it goes? Well, no, because they had success. They had money early on. So say they packed the Rose Bowl in 99, they win the... They, they beat, you know, with a famous Brandy Chastain. And God, mm-hmm. I hate Brandy Chastain. 
But anyway, she rips her r- <laughs> rips her shirt off, and yeah. you know that's the beginning. That's the springboard to the women's uh, the Musa, the the first pro league which I played in after college. Where'd you play? But it ends up uh, failing. Uh, I was drafted at Bay Area, okay. so I played uh, in like San Fran, San Jose, yeah. California, cool. right out of Nebraska, which went uh, wow. I went to for, for university, and then I played in Atlanta for a little bit. Did you enjoy that time? Yeah, it was great. Of course, but there were eight teams, and it was, you know by coastal and team in Atlanta it just was never going to work. They no. ran out of money real quick. Quickly. Yeah. For sure. So anyway, getting back to my point is so like title nine is passed late seventies and that sort of evens the playing field. So women's sports gets equal opportunity. So you're seeing the fruits of that in the current players on the women's national team. Um, if you talk about all like Canada or the U S but to go back to the U.S., so they file a gender discrimination lawsuit against their own association for mm-hmm. equal pay and for unfair working conditions. Right. So if – and this is still in court, I think. Correct. So they say that the men draw more. They pack the stadiums. They get more gate. Not the case. They No, it's not. But if you compare it to other associations like uh, like Canada or England or Spain, the Netherlands, um, who won uh, – the European championship for the women and did very well at the, at last year's world cup. You're not going to see the same parody. Beca- They're the exception to the rule. But that's because it doesn't draw the same dollars media wise. I'm, I, I'm telling you if that changes, so does everything else. That that's it. And, but that's almost ridiculous. So, but, but that's what they point to as the correct. justification for it. The, correct. So I think the the Norwegian FA now they're paid equally. Correct. Um, but that's again the exception to the rule. And the exception to the rule is always an interesting sort of marker, mm-hmm. but it's not enough. No. Because what ends up happening is we always point out the exception to the rule, and that's where the conversation ends. Mm-hmm. Again. It doesn't make sense. No. The reason this is important to me is because of my daughter and because I don't know if she'll be into football so far. She's not really a Chelsea fan. I am trying, or at least a football <laughs> fan. I'm trying. I'm trying. My son a little bit more. Anything. But the point being is it's enough. And, I, and I'm, it, it brings me on a, on a sort of lower level where I'm checking myself on, on my sports apps. And a lot of the stuff that I'm checking does come from Europe. The women's game women's football game in Europe is as prominent as everything else on that page. You don't have to open 40 pages to get to it. It's front and center. When you do that here, it's not. Mm-hmm. But why? And this is very, but this will, this is part of that circle. It's part of that ecosystem. Like mm-hmm. what is it? Yes. You have to win a world cup to get that play. And then, Stay there? Yeah, but I mean, they're not even there yet, right? No. So they they need to win, I think, to set the precedent. But and to go back to, to Europe and to talk about the England uh, women's national team or the, the pro league the pro there. Leagues, yeah. So Barclay used to be the, the Barclays English Premier League, yep. right? And then it's no longer. But Barclay, I think last year, uh, jumped in for the women's um, – pro league right. and for three years like is pumping in millions of dollars and they're playing double headers with the men yep um chelsea women are playing before the chelsea men they're killing it by the way yeah notice i they said just beat chelsea arsenal there, thank just, you uh, yeah they just beat arsenal yesterday <laughs> yeah so that's that's a really really great league yep geographically it makes more sense can't we you can't yeah. do that in canada no you but, can't but we need something that's in the cpl is that an opportunity is that an opportunity if the MLS doesn't want to pick up those reins, could be. Yeah. Again, these cl- th- those leagues, I know it's 25 years and I get, it's infant. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't the MLS do something like this as a pilot project and get every one of these clubs? Yeah. Every one of these clubs could have a female club. Um, same thing, CPL just started. Mm-hmm. Make that your mandate. Do that. I know. Now. Yeah. Not in 10 years when you've made your mark. Do it now. Mm-hmm. Start now. You're, you're, you're working on everything. It really then be in the forefront. It, it's the only, like, I'm, it's the only way. And again, I, I want you to, I want your opinion on this, but if it's not sort of drilled in over and over and over again, whatever it is you want to change, whatever it is, it, it, it just, it's nice to talk about it, but it's just not, 
Yeah, no, it's, it's it's not enough either right. to just to just talk about it. But if it if it's out in the mainstream a little bit more, and I think you guys on your uh, as I as I mentioned earlier, I think it was creeping your Instagram account just to just to see what we're about. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking about how important it is to support the the local clubs and to to support you know the the football and the soccer that's that's nearby and and your national team and and the discussion needs to be why are we just talking about them. When it's the Olympic qualifying, why are we just talking about them? Because or of the World if, Cup? or if we are, well, we brought this up before that uh, they were friendlies, and then uh, for the men's national team, mm-hmm. there was no pre- there was no press on the two games yeah. in Barbados, and then uh, Iceland, Iceland that went really far in the Euros. No, nobody talk- I, I know we lost one zero, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I I just I'm I'm having a hard time, especially especially with 2026 just around the corner. So is it that we're waiting for the cities to get named in Canada? I mean, the U.S. will get the bulk and then in Mexico, and then there'll start to be more of, um, uh, you know, maybe a chain reaction. Things mm-hmm. will start to go. And then, you know, it's it's historically proven that anywhere that a World Cup it touches ground, changes everything. But we did have the Women's World Cup. Yeah. And have you seen a major change? I haven't. No. I'm, I'm not. Unfortunately you know, not. Right. So, so what? Like, and, and I mean, I don't have an answer, obviously, but I, somebody with, you know, your pedigree and everything that you've seen through the States, through Canada, playing for the, I mean, you must talk to people. I don't know if it's, you know, everything on, it's not on your mind every day. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that you're doing um, and you're removed, like you said, but I mean, what's it going to take? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really know. Yeah. I, I think there needs to be, like you were saying, uh, it needs to come from associations. It needs to come from sponsorship. Um, it can't just be what's broadcast and 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 all that stuff because there's never going to be change. Um, so listen, when I was when I was playing at every event that I was at, if I was up for an award and there was the the soccer Quebec has a gala de mitin where clubs are honored, national team players are honored, pros are honored. So anytime I saw Joey Saputo, I'm sure he was like, oh, Christ, here comes this girl again. And I'd be like, Joey, when are you going to get a, a women's impact team? They could totally do it. This would be the perfect year to do, do it. And I do not understand why not. <laughs> and and the, the, the Whitecaps had a program gone. They did so have a program. That's right. They did a very successful program. And they were and playing who? Was, who were they playing? Who were the, the who was that team? Like that what was, was in there? part of the old W League, yes. which folded. Right. Again, good there news. Go. No, but there you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, I think at, at this point, uh, maybe it's not the the CPL, maybe it's the the oh. NWSL, oh, and yeah. then we need to get some Canadian teams in there because yeah. the associations, Mexico and the U.S. and the Canadian associations, uh, <laughs> I guess the soccer NAFTA. Right. Be, the you, NAFTA, or like CONCACAF. That. We can yeah, just call yeah. it CONCACAF. It's got its own name. Um, they have an agreement with the NWSL so that they pay the salaries of the national team players and they're placed on the various teams. Is that right? Yep. So, I mean, I don't know. So that could be a perfect, no, that. but that could be a perfect linchpin to, to grow that more teams. Yeah. So they're spread that along. They're pumping in, they're injecting some money in there and they have the, the top tier players from all three respective national teams. So. Why can't there be Canadian teams in there? And why can't you put them maybe in in cities like Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver? Yeah, sure. I with, know there's which, all kinds whatever, of variables. I, but I, there's always variables. But just, that, do that's, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. That's it. Exactly. Get the, just get that <laughs> get that out of the way. Would you? Are you going to uh, uh, push your kids along the direction of playing pro sport, or is that not something that I mean uh, that's really on your mind? Do they show a vested interest? in in football are they are they totally oh, down or my do they... so my oldest is it just yeah. turned 10 and yeah. well he thinks he's gonna play in the nhl oh yeah yeah amazing yeah and who are we to, so, to burst that exactly bubble, right not right. gonna throw percentages at him he's 10 no, no but, but why would you it. We no but why a, would you yeah. no yeah we're just at the outdoor rink today and my my twins, today yeah. boy, boy girl twins are five and they they're in their second year of hockey but they're also going to be in their second year of soccer but my oldest awesome. when the twins were born we put them in soccer and i think it was like You've ruined my life. Who are these two new people that have? Oh, yeah, yeah, totally you know, dominated the yeah, time. I I hate them, and you're putting me in this sport. What is? And people are yelling on the sidelines, and they might be cheering, but I hate it. 
Really? And so and he so never the no, timing he, was just yeah. terrible, right? Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> and but he's a he's a sports kid. He's, he's yeah, played football. Cool. He plays all the sports at school. Like he plays a, a bunch of different stuff and just loves it. But people are like, "Oh, you must be so crushed." He doesn't play soccer. I'm like, "No, no, I'm no of not course crushed. not." Right? We still That's play amazing. at home. I still get the mega on the side lawn. It's okay. You have a team you support. <laughs> a pro team. Yeah. Liverpool. Yes. Yeah. I'm bringing that up because it seems the last couple of guests have been very LFC heavy. Mm -hmm. That damn bird! I can't <laughs> escape it. <laughs> Ravan. It's so much nicer than the, blue. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But we're not. Again, I don't. On the show, I stay as neutral as absolutely possible. Um, uh, yeah, sort of as choose like yeah. going like this. But um, that's amazing when you told me that. That's really cool. Do uh, do you ever watch the Premier League in the morning with the kids, or is it ever on? Is, I you guys... try. Well, with the new deal with the streaming and everything, uh, and we just zone, get the yeah. NBC game. So yeah, so I don't. I don't of... get very much. I, I was mentioning it to you before the show. My sister yeah. Bonnie, her husband Phil, is a is a massive a uh, yeah Liverpool fan, and so. I like we're at a family gathering. He's on his phone. I was like, Phil, Phil, what's, what's the score? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he, he keeps me plugged in, but. Okay, well, yeah. this interview is over. So let's see. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, hobbies. Do you have any hobbies? Anything that's uh, not sports related? Um, well, I teach yoga and movement. That's what I got into after I retired because I had a bunch of injuries near the end of my career. Did it help? Hugely. So, you know, mental, physical, I think it was all things rolled into one. And so I, I, I did. Uh, my training here in Montreal at Nadi Yoga, which is a great yoga studio in the mile end. But now my teaching is very much to, to athletes and it's my, the spectrum of sort of yoga is, has widened. So I still call it yoga because it's easy to explain, but it's, uh, it's all things kind of movement and multi-planar stuff to sort of complement their, their practice. Have you seen um, that being used as a real tool for pro athletes over the last five years, I think five, even 10 years, but really in the last three. Yeah, I think it's more, it's more in the mainstream. one of the pieces, mm -hmm. right? It's part yeah. of one of the training pieces now. Yeah, and one of the things that I really focus on, especially with athletes, but that everybody needs is breathing, breathing. and down regulation and, and how to teach athletes especially, but just everybody, how to turn on your off switch. So to go from like adrenaline um, be like, go, go, go. I'm overscheduled. And whether that's sports, whether you, or you're playing a professional sport or whether you're a mom or a dad or a student and how to teach your body to, to chill out. So take it down. And that's very much through the breath. And, um, I'm trained, um, a woman named Jill Miller founded, uh, this program called yoga tune up okay. and it's these therapeutic yoga balls. And there's a big squishy air filled one that you lie on and you breathe on. You can use it on your on your chest, on your back, on your belly, and it's incredible. Really? Yeah, I don't get any money from them, by the way. No. I just, I just, you just wanted to say that. No, she's that's brilliant, cool. and Super I've cool. done a lot of their trainings, and I use it a lot with the athletes, and also like smaller rubber ones that are that are kind of pliable, amazing, and they yeah. they take your superficial fascia, and they help everything kind of glide and move better. Wow. It's really awesome. I know. I that's something that's very that, that's very interesting. There's a lot of the breathing part that you mm -hmm. just mentioned. I know is a is a key component yep. to the whole thing it's actually when you're in performance again you could speak to this better than i could but yeah when you're in performance but also when you're just trying to sort of well, decompress right yeah so it's it's while you're you're trying to perform at your peak but then it's it's performing at your peak because you understand how to recover right it's huge right? and it's that piece of the puzzle so one of the main subjects uh, the main subject about us uh, on this first half podcast is about uh, soccer and football, does it have a chance of really growing within the community in North America? Will it be like a hockey? Will it be like a baseball in the U.S. or basketball? Will, you know, it infiltrate everywhere, not just, you know, pockets here and there mm -hmm. or people that play it? Will it be, and this, it sort of leads to what we were talking about, the women's game and 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 sort of the national teams and stuff. Does it have a chance for everybody to be a rabid fan? Is it just about time or is it about marketing? What is it that you think it's, uh, how is it going to sort of progress over the next 50 years? Well, I think it's on an uptick already. So I, I see it just not necessarily booming from here, but I think continuing to, to grow despite the competition from the NFL and the NBA and, 
MLB and the NHL. <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of competitions. <laughs> but you know, if you talk about yeah. Canada and you know hockey dominates, right? Yeah, totally. But uh, but you know the Raptors and NBA and that's big, and I think you're seeing that talked about more, and and there's more time given to that, and and fans are kind of jumping on the bandwagon if they weren't already there, and so I think there's there's place for soccer. You know, I don't I don't think uh, I don't think that it's it's going to be pushed out. I think that there's there's part of the market and part of that pie that it can grab and continue to to, to grow. Amazing. And there's can be overlap too, right? Like it's, there's massive sports Venn diagram. It's not just oh yeah. I'm a I I just like American football. Yeah. No. And and you I know? guess with media that it, it there's just so much there's so many channels that need to be filled that I yeah. think that it'll always be room for for pretty much any sport, right? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, but but I see it. I see it on still the on the upswing. Yeah, sure. For sure. Right, and again, the World Cup and the women's gonna, game too. And the women, well, more specifically, absolutely. absolutely continuing to grow for I sure. Think so but too. it needs it needs the money. It needs the sponsorships. It needs a the, proper and a and a structure and and a few you know a few of those big players in like you said in sponsorships or people that already are involved with teams or in leagues that are willing to like no no it's time to yep. carve out this little piece and really push it forward That's and it. not let go and go through the rough parts. It, exactly it's like yeah. a business to be right? in it for it's the long haul the long sure. haul yeah not just fold the moment the, there's a little bit exactly. of niggling because that's always what happens yep right business okay so um there's one other little part that we like to do in the show it's called 12 questions okay so what we're going to do is it's very quick questions you answer and we just move on okay. there's no wrong answer okay, okay. except for like this is like the Liverpool. rapid fire portion of the game show that i was never on yeah exactly <laughs> with a gong <laughs> Or ba ba banana 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 right? Not, I had yeah. to figure out a way. I had to figure out a way to add that in. Those Muppets, man. Okay, so twelve questions. Ready? Yep. Okay. What's your favorite sport? Soccer. What I song? I can't say football. No, sorry, you can. It's soccer. okay. Okay, we'll get to there. Yeah. What song or band would you want blasting as you walk into a stadium? I I guess it has to be the hip. Um, Little Bones. Love it. Favorite. That's fantastic. Uh, favorite footy or sports team? Liverpool. Okay, that's great. Fantastic. Good for you. <laughs> <clears throat> favorite athlete, dead or alive? Oh. Okay, so childhood Amy, Wayne Gretzky, or my brother, Ian Walsh. Um, current, because of our discussion, Christine Sinclair. Favorite breakfast item? Coffee. <laughs> favorite drink alcoholic or non-alcoholic mm, beer tea or coffee coffee dream trip if you haven't taken it already. oh okay so with the national team we went to auckland in new zealand and i would love to go back but go to the south island because i had a teammate um taryn swiatek who was a goalie on the team a long time ago and she went there and just the, the lakes and the scenery and the hiking and everything is apparently must unreal. be spectacular yeah so there favorite condiment ketchup mustard sriracha veganaise veganaise <laughs> yeah okay so good i'm not got nothing to say about that it's fantastic <laughs> you were doubting me <laughs> no i'm not i just i'm not supposed to react but of course i'm you gonna did. react no i'm not bias no <laughs> pajamas or no pajamas no pajamas Favorite social media to look at or watch? Or is there something that you're following right now that you'd like our listeners to check out? Oh, so uh, Instagram, um, mindless scrolling, but also for information. Like, don't go there and get all your stuff. But, like, my nerd stuff is what I was talking about. Like, Yoga Tune Up, uh, right. Jill Miller, Parasympathetic Nervous System. Cool. Sounds totally stuff. nerdy. Vegas I love Nerve. It. The, really, that's great. <laughs> that's, nah, that's good. That's so totally amazing. What do you have a superstition? Oh well, currently now, no, I don't. Did you have them when you were playing? Uh, probably like weird stuff with my socks, but like I mean, not like uh, me. okay, I'm going to put on my left sock and then my uh, right okay. sock, but like okay, so I played 102 times for my country and I only scored five times. Um, but if I ever got like club, I obviously scored more goals. If I ever got in a scoring tear, I would keep the same socks and not wash them. <laughs> That's a super sti- that Are you kidding me? It's huge. It's disgusting. It's yeah. amazing. It's yeah. fantastic. And as a kid playing ringette, I would, I were back because I played basketball a ton too. And yeah. I, I would wear two pairs of socks. Basketball, And yeah, again, if I sure. got streaky 
for a basketball or a ringette, whatever it was, I would keep the same outer pair. So I remember like taking them out yep. of my ringette bag and like holding them up and everybody going, oh my God, because they were just like crusty and disgusting. Steamy. Like, yes, That's the socks. The power. I'm on a streak. That's amazing. <laughs> Call it soccer or football. Yeah, soccer. I can't do it. My husband's uh, parents are Glaswegian. Okay. So I feel like I'm a step away from calling it football, but I, I feel like I can't give it it's just not in the DNA. credibility. Yeah. My kids' DNA, they could do it maybe. Amy, but, yeah. thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for everything. The great insight, great conversation. To be honest, we probably could have kept going. going yeah, but I think I, so. Uh, there is a time limit. I get dirty stares from <laughs> Chu and Raven that are hanging around. So we're going to keep it to our time frame. But really, I'm honored. Thank you so much. We're honored to have you on our show. It's my honor. Thank you for having me. Great interview. And for everybody else, please, please follow us, connect with us, and start a conversation on all our social media channels. We have them all, and we're looking to hear back from everybody out there. So let us know what you like and what you don't like, and uh, stay in touch. Thanks again.